Chapter 2 Soledad That cold early morning, Papa parked La Cacaracha, our old jalopy, at one end of the cotton field. He, Mama, Roberto, my older brother, climbed out and headed toward the other end, where the picking started. As usual, they left me at home in the car to take care of Trumpita, my little brother, who was six months old. I hated being left by myself with him when they went off to pick cotton. As they walked farther into the field, I climbed into the top of the roof of the car, stood on tiptoe and watched them until I could no longer tell them apart from the other pickets, pickers. Once I lost sight of them, I felt pain in my chest the same pain I always felt when they left Trumpita and me alone. Sobbing, I climbed into the car and wrapped my arms around Trumpita, who slept in the back seat. He woke up crying and shivering from the cold. I covered him with a small blanket and gave him his bottle of milk. He calmed down and went back to sleep. After several long hours, I climbed on top of the roof of the car again to see if Papa, Mama, and Roberto were on their way back for lunch. I looked as far away as I could without blinking, hoping to spot them. When I finally saw them, my heart started racing. I jumped off of the car, fell on the ground, got up, and ran out to meet them. I almost knocked Roberto off his feet when I jumped on top of him. After checking on Trumpita, Mama and Papa spread a green army blanket on the ground behind La Cacaricha, where we all sat to eat. Mama reached into a gross, large grocery bag and pulled out the taco she had prepared for us at dawn that morning. Papa ate quickly because he did not want to lose time from work. Roberto and I ate slowly, trying to make the time last a bit longer. Holding him in her left arm, Mama nursed Trumpita while she ate with her right hand. She then laid him on the back seat of the car, changed his diaper, kissed him gently on his forehead, as he closed his eyes and fell asleep. Papa got up, folded the blanket, and placed it in the back of the inside of the truck of the car. He then picked up his empty cotton sack and flipped it over his left shoulder. That was a signal for Roberto and Mama that it was time to get back to work. I climbed on top of the roof of La Cacreccia again and watched him disappear into the sea of cotton. My eyes began to cloud up. I climbed off the car, leaning against the back tire. I sat and thought, if I learned to pick cotton, Papa would let me go with him, Mama, and Roberto, and I wouldn't be left alone anymore. After checking on Trumpita to make sure he was still asleep, I quietly walked over to the row nearest the car and picked cotton for the first time. It wasn't as easy as I thought. I tried to pick it with both hands, just like Roberto, but could only pick one cotton ball at a time. I held the cotton shell steadily from underneath my left hand while I picked the balls with my right hand and piled them on the ground. The shell's sharp prongs scratched my hands like cat claws and sometimes dug into the corner of my fingernails and make them, made them bleed. I had trouble reaching the cotton balls at the very top of the tall plants, so I leaned against the plants and pushed them over with my body until they touched the ground. I then stood on top of them while I stooped over and picked the cotton balls. I had to step off to the side because the plants sprang back like a bow, whipping me in the face if I did not move fast enough. At the end of the day, I was tired and disappointed. I had not picked as much cotton as I had wanted to. The pile was only about two feet high. Then I remember Papa saying that we got paid three cents per pound. So I mixed dirt clods with the cotton to make it way more. At dusk, Papa, Mama, and Roberto finally returned. I was about to tell them my surprise when Mama interrupted me. How was Trumpita? she asked, going straight to the car to check on him. When she opened the car door and saw him, she was angry. I had been so learning busy learning to pick cotton that I had forgotten all about him. Tired from crying, he had fallen asleep after soiling himself and dropping and breaking the bottle of milk. I told you to take care of Trumpita, Mama shouted. But look what I did, I said proudly, pointing to my pile of cotton. Mama glanced at the pile, shook her head in anger, and began cleaning Trumpita. Papa looked at my cotton, grinned slightly, and asked Roberto to help him collect it. 
His grin quickly turned to a frown when he discovered the dirt clods. He separated from them the cotton, pointing them out one by one as he tossed them on the ground. You should be ashamed of yourself. We could be fired for this, he said. Besides, your job is to take care of Trumpeta. Is that clear? He continued, placing both hands on his belt buckle. See, si, Papa, I answered timidly. I was hurt and confused. Seeking comfort, I walked over to Roberto and whispered to him, Some day I will go pick cotton with you, my Papa, and Mama. Then I won't have to be left alone. Roberto put his arms around me and nodded his head.